I'm Gary Jacobs, president of the World Academy of Art and Science, and I'm extremely pleased to be able to contribute to this important conference organized by Pugwash Croatia and the World Academy on how to reach peace and sustainable human security in these very uncertain times. And I'd like to start my remarks by reference to the extraordinary achievements that took place in a very short time at the end of the Cold War, which were indeed heady times. We saw the sudden end of superpower rivalries, the end of the NATO-Warsaw Pact confrontation, reunification of Germany within a year, the dissolution of superpower rivalries, the vast reduction in military spending by about one third within a few years, the vast reduction in nuclear arms that resulting of the nuclear arms negotiations and the new treaties that led to a more than 75% reduction in nuclear weapons, the rapid spread of freedom and democratization to former Soviet satellites, economic gains from economic reform and integration with the global economy, the birth, development and expansion of the European Union, which arguably is the most important event in global events in the last 75 years. The opening of world trade with the founding of the World Trade Organization. The activation of UN diplomacy and growth in the effectiveness of multilateralism. The birth and spread of the internet, which has connected us all over the world. The UN adoption of the Millennium Development Goals in 2000, and then even more significantly, when 193 countries came together in 2015 and adopted the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which we are in process of striving to achieve today. And we can also mention the rapid developments and rise of the importance of China and India and Brazil and other developing countries in global affairs. Today, the world is characterized by arising threats that are due to violence, increasing violence all over the world, and in these times, I don't have to mention it uh, because it's there in the headlines to remind us every day of the, the violence, the loss of life, the suffering, and the prospects of an ever increasing violence around the world, multiplying and spreading to regions around the world. And of course, the threat of climate change, arguably the greatest threat that humanity and life on earth has ever faced. And yet, we prove inca incapable of responding coherently, cohesively, in a coordinated fashion at the level required to address the climate threat. And to add all to all of that, the uncertainty and impact of very rapid technological advances, especially, of course, in artificial intelligence, and the anxiety and uncertainty that's been raised about the future of work, the future of our jobs, even the future of our role as the leading species on the planet. And following that, the impact that AI may have, the misapplication, misuse of AI may have on our political systems, our elections, our news coverage, the polarization of views in the society by the spread of fake news artificially manufactured by AI. At the same time, the failure to stop the Russian aggression in Ukraine, failure to resolve the Middle Eastern problem once and for all, or even now that it is broken out again, the rising confrontation between China and the West, the spread of popularization and polarization in politics uh, around the world, which is dividing societies, is encouraging extremism, uh, encouraging uh, ill will and opposition, intense opposition, tensions within societies, the rising economic inequalities, social unrest, large-scale migration, and the formation of new blocks of undemocratic countries coming together to protect themselves against the trend of progress in the world. What I have spoken to up until now is what we're all familiar. This is the context from which we must start. And here in this conference, we're looking for solutions, solutions which indeed seem to be missing. We're looking for effective leadership to come up with the answers and the right actions that we need to successfully address, address these multidimensional challenges. 
and we don't find that leadership at all. We don't find the answers. We don't find the solutions. And we're faced with the prospect now that it looks extremely difficult for us to achieve the remarkable goals set for the 17 SDGs in 2015. And not only national governments, but uh, even our multilateral agencies are beginning to concede that there's very unlikely that we will do it, that we will achieve them. And of course, most especially uh, the, the climate goal, where we see we're falling further and further behind. And the last year is the hottest year on record. And this one is most likely going to be even hotter than that. The greatest threat humanity has ever faced at the same time. The solution to these things, we need a new concept of security to replace the competitive nationalist military concept of security that's been ruling the world uh, for, for centuries and has reached its peak during the Cold War and has come back now and is giving us the same kind of increased militarization, increased military spending, increased conflict and violence in the world at the same time that it's giving us increased levels of insecurity for people all over the world at all levels of society, from the poorest who are looking for jobs to the wealthiest who wonder what's going to happen to the economy in the future. We need a new paradigm of security. And that's why we've included in the title here, human security. The World Academy of Art and Science has been collaborating with the United Nations for the last what, year and a half on what we call a global campaign on human security. Human security was a concept first put forth by UNDP for the United Nations in 1994 in a report on world development in which they identified seven key areas critical to the security of each and every person on earth. Access to food, health, environmental security, individual security, safety of our lives, our personal community security, peace and harmony in our environments, political security, economic security. And indeed today, in all these seven dimensions, we are not only lacking security, but insecurity is rising for one or more of these dimensions for just about everybody on earth. And we should also include an eighth dimension, technology, because though technology has been a tremendous boon and aid for our progress, it's also been and is looking to be a greater and increasing source of insecurity. We don't know how it's going to affect our futures and how it's going to affect each and every one of us. We need a new concept of security that puts people first. We need a new concept of security that focuses on these six, seven, eight areas and ensures the stability, the certainty, the confidence that we need so that people all over the world can live in harmony and peace and not break out in protests or not leave their native places and migrate penniless overseas or over long land treks to try to find safer, better places for them to live in future. We need human security to redirect our policies and resources, all types of resources, to maximize benefit to all human beings on earth. We need to reform the multilateral system in order not just to respond to the priorities and special interests and power structures of individual member countries, but to really be an organization that represents we the people in the world, as it says in the UN Charter, not just the self-interest and com competitive urges of nation states. These are big changes. These are not changes that are gonna happen overnight. We have to move in that direction. If we're looking for quick fixes and fast solutions, we're likely to be disappointed. At the same time, we'd be very misguided if we lose faith in our capacity to tackle these problems as we have in the past. Indeed, in spite of the sudden rapid decline in our sense of security, the overall progress of humanity over the last three decades, and of course the last seven decades, has been unprecedented in history. And human progress has never been a straight line. It's never been a rising curve that only goes in one direction. Every important breakthrough in our 
in 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 the life of humanity has been uh, a matching zigzag pattern of two steps forward and one back. Why? Because when we step forward, it's the progressive side of humanity that is most ready and eager and leads the way. And the more we lead the way, the greater the tension it creates with those who feel left behind or are frightened of the future or are afraid of their vested, losing their vested interest and their privileges that they have from an earlier, more traditional way of life. So this is not a surprise that we had this sudden reversion. When the tensions come up of new opportunities, like the possibilities of AI, the positive possibilities that it can offer to us, at the same time it raises anxieties for those who, feel, who see a negative side or are concerned about losing their jobs, for instance. And this has happened throughout history. Every time there was a great step forward or a great technological advance, there were people who were frightened of it. They felt it was the end of the world for them. Uh, and that releases insecurity, protest, uh, resistance, social unrest. We've been through it before. The only difference today is it's a phenomenon at the, nat at the global level. Because indeed, today we are more and more a single global society, no longer compartmentalized and isolated from one another. So what happens in the USA may not affect what happens in Russia or in China or in India or in Latin America or anywhere else in the world. Our solutions have to start with the foundations. We're going to have to start with the way we need to change in our thinking. And that's what I meant by a new paradigm in security. But the change in thinking we need has to go far wider than just a changing one concept. We need to stop dividing reality and people and places and things and subjects and activities into compartments, isolated uh, airtight compartments in which we pretend that they're all unrelated to each other and everybody and everything can be done separately. As Buckminster Fuller once signed, the academic silos that divide knowledge into a thousand different pieces is the source of the ignorance that we have today, because life is not divided into thousands of pieces. Life is an integrated whole, and every aspect and every dimension is linked to every other dimension. And the problems we face today are very largely because the thinking on which our knowledge is based, on which our policy is based, on which our attempts at security are based, are all compartmentalized and fragmented. Do we really think in a world that today that any country can feel secure by protecting itself and fortifying itself against everything that comes from outside? It's simply not possible any more than any country can be secure from climate change uh, by what it does internally. It can only be done uh, in concert, in cooperation with one another. And that requires fundamental change in our education system all over the world, at all levels, in every field of activity, to begin to look more holistically at our life together, our life of human beings on earth, as one integrated whole. We're all in this together. We all thrive or don't by finding the solutions, the harmonious solutions for us all to work together. We need also, of course, vast improvements in global rule of law and a shift from the idea of laws that nation states can stand up and violate it with abandon, without fear of uh, uh, enforcement. We need to put the weight of humanity, the voice of humanity behind laws that will stand for everybody. We need to live by the universal human values which were first projected in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. And for the first time in history, we're enshrined in really concrete goals and activities in the 17 SDGs in 2015, an unprecedented development. And even if we are far behind, even if we don't meet those goals by 2030, we're going in the right direction by striving to do so. And there's more recent evidence, especially reports that just out by the Force for Good, which show that we still can reach the, the 17 goals of Agenda 2030 by 2030, or maybe even sooner, if we simply make the other changes we need, mobilize our resources, mobilize our capacities, reform our policies, really work together in a coordinated fashion. And of course, to do this, we need something else. 
we need not only the right ideas, we need the right leadership. And maybe it's not realistic anymore to think that we're going to find the one leader, whether he's a religious leader or a political leader or an intellectual leader, who's going to lead all humanity to the future. In fact, it's never been done. Today, we have organizations that are dedicated to global peace and human security. As never before, we have organizations that are no longer representing a party and a nation state. They represent the aspirations and goals and values of humanity as a whole. They're transnational, as Pugwash is, as the World Academy is, and many other uh, very important uh, organizations, such as the Club of Rome. In all fields, we have them. These or today, organizations can be leaders, powerful leaders, even more powerful than any individual. And especially when we join together, when we work together for a common cause and a common vision as a network of networks that tries to mobilize the public opinion and support and aspirations of global humanity as, as a whole to the people, when we talk to the people and not to the governments, when we talk to the people and not to the diplomats, when we talk and mobilize the will of human society to go beyond this transition period. And perhaps it's an inevitable transition period because we never make the whole progress in one step. And now we know, we see blatantly to our horror, to our terror, to our great disturbance, we see how much remains to be done, how far we have to still make in progress. But that's no reason for discouragement. That's no reason for us to give up. If we look how far we've come from in the past, we'll see we're well placed to go further ahead. I welcome this conference, this discussion, and look forward to hearing of the proceedings of it uh, in the near future. Thank you very much.